Greetings! So you want to make a couple of photos for your blog and for Warzone Studios Instagram? Good idea! Let's start with the most readily available method – using your phone. Let's start with miniature positioning. It's important to choose the right angle of a miniature to show off its best aspect and its pose. I prefer 45 degrees both for people and for minis. Frontal photos are also good for minis. You should try to show three points – face, weapon, movement. Look at these photos made with an iPhone 10. The tech priest is suitable for photographing from the front. The weapon is visible. Face too. Her index finger and the hand wheel with no weapon are hidden from us, so only the wrist is visible. In this case, a front view is recommendable, but not for the assassin in a yellow helmet. Her pose and movement are absolutely lost in a frontal view. She wants a photo with 45 degrees turn. Also, people and miniatures want to have extra space from the side where their movement or side is pointed to. They want to move, they want to be free to rush in this direction. Try to place your model the way it will best fit your background, scenery and terrain. If the model is running, it should run between buildings down the street. If the model aims, it should aim at some distant point, not a nearby wall. Phone, camera and miniature positioning. How should I correctly position my phone and miniature? Phones are usually equipped with wide-angle lenses, so it is hard to make your miniature look big inside a frame. Usually we try to place a smartphone near a miniature, as close as we possibly can. If your phone is too close, the model will be out of focus. Big mistake. Try to catch the point where the model is 100% in focus and looks rather big. Don't worry, you can crop it later. Why not just crop a photo to make a model look big enough? Well, it is possible, but quality will be reduced. The geometry of the lens will be shifted if you crop a non-central part, because the lens works differently on the sides of the frame, corners and in the center. Hit my advice, don't play around too much with cropping. Don't shoot from above. Set the camera on the eye line of your miniature or slightly above. Why? Because the head of your miniature will look bigger and the proportions will be distorted. Especially if you are using a wide-angle lens. The same thing works for people, children and so on. If you take a photo of a vehicle, well, try to make it its top visible too. The same works for regiments and battalions. Try to set your miniature far away from a background. It will help too. Eliminate and emphasize your model more than a background. Blur background. Works best with apertures of 3 or 2. A universal advice both for pose and for position of your camera. Use references. Stands or holders for your mini and camera. You may want to show a miniature above the ground. It is easier to shoot it and to cut your table or any other basement out of the photo. Some people may have a holder for minis, others like myself may use plasticine and anything else that's helpful. Tripods. They help. Use a tripod or find something to fix your phone solidly. It will allow a phone or a camera to utilize a shutter for a longer period and it will give you a brighter picture. So, a tripod helps when you have a lack of light. Light sources help when you don't have a tripod. Settings. The wide angle setting is not for miniatures. Wide angles are a kind of special tool for situation when you have no room behind you. Rarely they may be used to make some kind of action or sport effect. Never use a wide angle setting for single miniatures. It destroys real geometry. Professionals never use it for portraits. You can learn more about this on the internet. It's worth noting, however, that it may be helpful to show lots of miniatures or a miniature inside its environment. Press on the face or body of your miniature on the screen. It will help to focus and to set the exposure perfectly for this part of the photo. It is what we need. If you want to make a step further, download an app which will allow access to manual settings of the camera. Lighting. Such a mandatory scene. You can use desk lamps, daylight from a window, flashlights, room light. 
permanent light sources for video. Try to avoid different temperatures of light sources. Yellow room light mixed together with daylight will make the light situation complicated. Photoshop will not help. Standard method of illumination. A source of light should be above the miniature. Slightly closer to camera and swan to the side. It's important to note, try not to use a flashlight on your phone or on your camera. It will be a front light and it will kill all shadows. This will make your model look flat and cheap. How to work with multiple light sources? Briefly, you should have main light source, filling source, backlight. Check out our video to understand better. Choosing a background. You can use a picture on your PC screen or tablet as a background for your miniature. It's an easy way to save your time and to create a special mood for your photos. Also, this trick is not well known now. Don't forget, you can change the brightness of your screen to make it darker than your miniature. White background. A sheet of paper or fabric. Photos made on a wide background are called high key. I love it because you can increase exposure to make your background be completely white. It will be perfectly white. It is possible both during and after shooting. Black backgrounds are called low key. It's impossible to decide which one is better. As for me, I try to use a background of an opposite color to my mini. A knight in a metal armor, he is nearly white, so I think low key will be great. Dark Templars, nearly black, but Templars on a white background will lose their aesthetics. What about Dark Templars Predator? Okay, I'll choose a white background to avoid a black brick on black situation. Snow Monster, he is white, but he looks more natural on a white background. You get the point. The choice of a background is a huge part of the creative process. Avoid folds and seams on a background. When your scene is illuminated, both of them will be extremely visible. Camera settings. This chapter will be useful both for those who use a real camera or a smartphone with a pro application that allows you to control camera setting. Which apps should I choose? I have checked some. Lightroom. What we need. Uh, here you have all the functions needed and the app is free. The only disadvantage is that I couldn't focus when I was close to the miniature with the tele lens. A focus. Nice editing functions, but no shutter speed and ISO control. Procam 8. Expensive and seems to be an overkill for our needs. Either way, good app. Pro camera. Seems pretty expensive and an overkill for us too, but anyway, it works. VSCO. Mostly for editing. No needed functions here. Don't even download it. Let's become acquainted with the basic terms of photography. Aperture. The size of the opening in the camera. A wide open aperture like one and a half gives more light for a brighter photo. A small aperture like 18 lets in less light. Wide apertures gives us unfocused background, while small ones will make a full photo sharp. Focused areas become narrow uh, with a wide aperture. Pay attention not to have a blurry tip on your weapon. Shutter speed. The longer the shutter stays open, the more light the camera will receive. One thousandth shutter speed means the shutter will be open for one thousandth of a second. It's okay to have a super fast shutter like 1 slash 200. For longer shutters such as 1 slash 80, there is a possibility that moving parts of an image will look blurry. Uh, that's why we should use a tripod while walking with a slow shutter. It's impossible to make a sharp image with a shutter slower than 1 slash 60 while holding a camera in your hands. ISO. The lower the better. It's a kind of digital sensitivity of a camera sensor. High values will help to work in a poorly illuminated scene, but will add some noise to your image. Editing. Uh, don't forget to add exposition if you use a wide background. It always helps. Lights and shades. Usually I reduce lights and increase shades, but it's all dependent on your situation. 
temperature. High temperature, more yellow. Sunny picture. Lower temperature, the colder the picture. Maybe cool for C5, why not? Tint. Just try to create natural colors. If the temperature can help us to create a special mood, tint can only add magenta or green. Modern phones usually deal well with this task automatically. Which light sources to buy? A professional sure knows what to buy. And if you need something for home use, I can recommend your no YN360S. A good and inexpensive light both for photo and video. Light boxes. Another big scene. This can be helpful to provide a soft and uniform light all over a miniature. It's easy to find lots of info about it on the internet. Uh, lots of things were left aside. Backgrounds to buy. Colored light sources, lenses, zoom, which focal length to choose. I tried to make this video short and helpful. Wish you all the best.